And welcome to the show. It's time for Key for Ten. We've got a great show here tonight. It's hot in a lot of the places in the world, and uh, so the topic is iced tea. And uh, so we'll, we'll discuss some iced tea and we'll whatever else uh, pops into our heads. We've got two musical guests here. Uh, one from Brisbane, Australia. We've got Paul Platt. And in Japan, T.C. Dean. And they will collaborate a little later with a little blues, so it's something to look forward to towards the end. And uh, so, well, let's get started with the introductions. And start with you, T.C. What Hello. Brings, what brings you here? What brought me here? To the Hangout or to Japan? <laughs> Uh, in the Hangout, uh, well, the title alone, Ice Tea is Hot. Let's talk about heat. Um, we had uh, 159 people hospitalized yesterday because of what's called Danetsu Shou. Uh, in Japan, Japanese, that's, that's heat stroke, uh, to give you an idea of what we're talking about. The, the heat level over here is rising. Today we're going to be above 37.9 degrees centigrade in my area. Um, at, I've got the AC behind me running. You see my little tiny Japanese air conditioner up there on the wall. Um, before I had it on, the temperature inside the house was already at around 37. And it's only, you know, it was only 9 o'clock in the morning at the time. So yeah, heat. Um, heat and iced, iced tea. That's a great discussion. And a good tangent to go off on is uh, global warming. So we'll <laughs> save, save that. Paul, why don't you introduce yourself? Yeah. Oh, hi, I'm Paul. I uh, live in Brisbane, Australia. And um, thanks for asking me on this uh, show. A um, bit of a tea drinker my, and coffee as well. Uh, but uh, from an English family, a Yorkshire family, so dad always had tea on the brew and it was pretty much always there, so uh, I like my tea, and um, yeah, thanks for having me on. No, it's uh, my pleasure. Great to have you here. And May King, back. Good to see you in, in your uh, Hello. Not Hello. usual spot. In the library? No, I'm in the, I'm in the state library at the moment. Um, the electricity packed up on me on my apartment this morning, so dashed in the bus to get here, and I made it in a, cu a couple of minutes before the hangout, so. <laughs> Power outage re related to the heat? No, not at all, no. Um, just put too many electrical bits and pieces into the sockets, I think. <laughs> yeah, well, it's not hot there in Brisbane, is it? You've got uh, winter. No, officially, officially it's July, um, but I've only lived here two years, so I'm not fully climatized yet. So I think it's a glorious, wonderful sunny day, and everyone else is in <laughs> fur boots and fur jackets. <laughs> yeah, what temperature? Celsius temperature? Um, I'm not sure at the moment. Um, I'm, I'm not quite sure. Paul, do you know what temperature it is at the moment? It's about... Two 15, 6, about 17 degrees. 17, nice. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I've just got a bit of a, a, a sore neck thing, so I'm keeping that nice and warm, that's all. It's, it's, it's quite pleasant, a but it's cold for us. <laughs> oh, it's 17 really degrees, I'd be out riding my bike in shorts. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> joining us for the first time is Jennifer Cook from Montreal. Hello there. Um, I'm the creator of what my coffee says to me, what my tea says to me, what my whiskey says to me. I like that. What you say to me, <laughs> pretty much everything. I, anything that talks to me, I'll, I, I'll illustrate it. But yeah, I just sure. started doing the tea and, um, uh, and got, hooked up with uh, tea for 10 or 10 for tea. <laughs> and this is how I ended up in the hangout. Oh, you've got a bit of a French accent. Is that Jennifer? Oh. Oh, it's not, it's not new, or I mean, it's not old. It's it's just new. <laughs> I've only I've only lived here for three years. I know, yes. just caught not caught a French accent already. That's <laughs> the power of osmosis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
the power yeah, of something, do some, all right. <laughs> do some awesome artwork, and I just shared shared one of your pieces on on Keeper Ten, and it was very popular. And uh, <laughs> yeah, look, looking forward to seeing lots more from you. Thank you, and Carlos. Hi, um, I'm Carlos, and I just got back from Kyoto, where I was grinding my own matcha, but they didn't let me take it home with me. I had to drink it on site, so. Uh, I have my own, um, or I went out and bought some, and I will actually be drinking matcha today, as opposed to my usual just promising I'm going to and then not following through. And the thing was, he didn't make it up to Tokyo to come and see me. I did oh, make it to Tokyo, shame. but I was there what? for all of ten minutes. Oh. Oh. You're not, not going to hang out in real life? We needed a hurl. You're not going to have a chance hurl? I'm very tightly scheduled. Oh. oh, to be all the way over there and not to hang out with PC. Yeah, that's just that's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> the company policy needs to be changed. Um, so, uh, making, I just thought I'd ask you if, uh, if there's any tea news you wanted to discuss but since it's the start of the show. Any tea news? Um, Actually, I did post out a few um, this week, um, which um, I was uh, intrigued by. There's a, a chap in the States who is a very, very well regarded member of the tea community, and uh, he's very passionate about sustainable living as well. And over 30 years, the chap's called, I should remember his name. Um, I think it's David Hoffman, I think, and uh, he's a distributor of tea um, and passionate about sustainability, and he's built his um, house over the years, over the past 30 years, um, and because he didn't get permission from the council, I think they're going to um, slap his hand, and it's such a shame. There was a video on um, one of the American TV channels and I shared the video, and the way that he has uh, built his home is absolutely amazing, and a fabulous tea uh, place as well. And um, it would be a shame if he had to knock that down. Um, so that was um, that was discussed uh, amongst uh, tea friends this week. Um, Sri Lanka. Um, they're going through a dichotomy at the moment. They've managed to protect their tea um, community, uh, the tea industry, for a long time. But um, in protecting um, exports and imports, their prices are very expensive. So they're considering whether they should open the gates a little bit. And so there's a lot of discussion ab about that at the moment. Yeah, I'd say um, that. So they're the two. That came back as the number one story probably of the week it is the uh, is the uh, divisiveness of, of that issue there in Sri Lanka. They don't they don't want to bring in uh, foreign tea for for better margins, better profits. They want to keep it all from Sri Lanka, and so uh, yeah, causing quite a debate. That's right. So yeah, so they're the two main news pieces um, of the week, I suppose. Okay. So. Uh, uh, as far as iced tea, um, Carlos, do you have any iced tea recipe? Oh, can't hear you. You're, you're muted. Carlos, you're muted. Unmute yourself. Yeah, I do not have any iced tea uh, recipes, but if you give me a moment, I do have something better. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. It is. Where's my screen share? Oh, a screen share. This is the first for T for 10 Hangouts. Whoa. <laughs> okay, let's check that out. There yeah. we go. Oh, Highly right. recommended. That is shaved ice with hojicha, um, that roasted uh, Japanese green tea. Um, there's also some red beans on there, some dango underneath, some ice cream. Uh -huh. um, Red beans and ice cream. It's oh, a yes. summer treat here in Japan. It's a, absolutely it, fantastic. It, the red beans here are sweet. Uh, they're they're azuki beans, and they're mm -hmm. uh, made for what's called anko. Anko is a, a 
a sweet bean paste that you'll see in the many different dessert shops and, and it's a it's a very common Japanese treat so when they mix it with ice like that shaved ice the azuki beans you have a mildly sweet it's a very polite kind of sweet yes um, and it's a it's a, a constant summertime treat here so I guess technically this is an iced tea because it is tea poured over shaved ice um, but I have absolutely <laughs> no idea how it's made it is so good. I cannot describe how delicious this was. Bob, well, I gi I'll give you one of my ice tree or my iced tea recipes, and it's really, really simple. Um, and I know not everybody's a fan of the tea bags. Sorry, but this one is. Um, but the apple cinnamon tea. Um, there's several different brands of, of, you know, where you can find these apple cinnamon teas. But you take apple cinnamon tea three bags in a one liter glass jar with a lid and fill it, put your tea bags in so that the, the tabs hang out, put the lid on it so that the, the tea is just suspended in the water. Let it sit out in the sun for about three hours. And the, the heat of the sun will actually cause the tea to infuse at a nice slow pace and the, the apple and cinnamon flavors will really get through it. Then you bring that inside and you with a little bit of honey, just pour that straight over ice and you have your iced tea. Good stuff. So that's um, regarded as um, sun tea, I think, which yes. um, originated in in, um, in the States somewhere. Was it California, I think? I'm not quite sure. Uh, through the um, southern United States, sun tea is very, very popular. Uh, yeah, you know, okay. Texas, and Alabama, Georgia, all through the southern United States, sun tea is, is mainly popular there uh, because it is a hot place, uh, and it's a specific taste. Sun-cooked sun tea has a different taste than regular, you know, from the teapot. Now, it's not a... Um it's not an iced tea, but one tea that is um, reasonable to make in the summer and is cool is kind of a cold brew loose leaf tea, which you can get by overpacking your pot with extra tea yeah. leaves um, and pouring in cold water. Um, and then you, you really, really want to oversaturate your pot with, uh, with the tea leaves. So you pour in just a, enough cold water for a drink, immediately pour it out, um, and it winds up tasting very, very different from a hot brew tea, but it's very good. Um, mm -hmm. Have you seen those water bottles? And it's a fascinating... Have you, you know the, the water bottles where in the lid there's a little infuser and you, and you just pour in some, some tea leaves and you just seal it up and shake it around a little? And uh, I've posted, posted one or two for sure on, on Tea for mm -hmm. Ten. What do you think of those? We've almost got a full house. Yeah. Yeah, we're making progress. Well, they're here. great for convenience, aren't they? They're great con for convenience, you know, for uh, cleaning out. So I, I think they're um, a great vessel. And it's, it's interesting because when I was in, um, when I lived in the UK, um, Brits and Chinese folk, and I'm both, I'm a BBC, British born Chinese. Um, we used to drink hot tea in order to cool us down. That was always the that was always the British way. It was always the Chinese way. We're coming over to Queensland. It's um, it's so warm here. Mm. I've actually experimented a lot more in iced tea, and similar to the sun method, I've actually used the cold brew method, which is similar to um, to what Carlos was saying. And what I um, I actually don't double the amount of tea leaves. I actually put in the the amount of tea leaves that I would use for a hot cup of tea, put mm -hmm. it into um, a pitcher, pop it in the fridge overnight, and then after eight hours, I've got this um, iced tea. Unfortunately, I did that yesterday in readiness for today's hangout because the electricity packed out this morning. I didn't have any. Tea, I didn't make any tea because I didn't have any electricity. So fortunately, I've got my iced tea, which is fantastic. <laughs> And Janice and uh, George have, have joined. George, you want to uh, introduce yourself? Hi, I'm uh, George Zepich. I'm uh, from uh, central Illinois uh, near Peoria. And uh, you may catch me on some different hangouts and get some friends uh, here that I hang out with. So that I drop by. And 
I uh, enjoy tea. I'm not an expert or anything, but uh, it's a great beverage. So I, I've got a quick question, though. Um, and you may have covered this many times in the past. I don't know, but um, what, what's the importance of the the water quality that you're putting into the tea? Um, this curious, uh, uh, you know, uh, about the water as opposed to the tea. Good question. Okay, that's a very good question. Um, it is all down to the taste. If you think about it, a cup of tea, 98% of it is water. So if you've got a bad water, you're going to have a bad cup of tea. When I lived in London, uh, London is a hard water area, so with the lime scale, that, um, you, lime scale deposits in the water, if I didn't filter that tea, it would, um, it would just make a, a terrible cup of tea, so it doesn't matter how good your quality of leaves are, the water will, will be terrible. And in fact, there were many times where even though I filtered the water, I could use the same tea leaves in London, go and visit my uh, parents up in uh, Bolton near Manchester, and it would be a different cup of tea because of the, the um, Manchester and Bolton is a soft water area. So the quality of water is extremely important. And also, um, as an extension to that, the temperature of water is also important as well. Um, we may have been brought up on popping the kettle on and boiling the water, and then when we want another cup of tea, we'll reboil the water again. And oxygen contributes to the flavor of the tea. So if you're boiling the oxygen out of the water and reboiling the water to make your second cup, you're effectively making yourself a stale cup of tea. Mm -hmm. So um, I've actually, um, I actually wrote a blog post about it last year. I met with a water company and uh, they have uh, this lovely filtration system where the water goes through a whole series of minerals. And I knew that the quality of water, um, the quality of the tea would taste different with the water in Brisbane, even though I filtered it, compared to this new filtration system. And when I did the test, I was just blown away. I knew what the results would be, but I was still blown away nevertheless. So I hope that answers your question, George. Yeah, thank you. That was enlightening. Thank you. How about if it's filtered like a Brita filter uh, in the in the fridge? Has that that's been sitting around? Probably has flattened out as far as oxygen. Is, that, is it better to have fresh cold water? It is better to have freshly drawn water if possible. Yeah, absolutely. Or one of those um, like a Brita filter that's right on the faucet kind. Absolutely. Yeah, and I. Um, Brita filters are great, uh, you know, they're convenient and um, they're um, not too expensive. I mean, some of the filtration systems out there are, can be really, really pricey, so uh, Brita is something that's a bit more amenable, um, affordable for folks, so yeah, absolutely. But yeah, freshly drawn water is always important, and I always encourage people that when you pop the kettle on, just use the minimum amount of water that you need in order to make a cup of tea. And then when you go back and make a fresh cup, then the water that's sitting in the kettle, put it, um, pour it over your um, plants or use it to, to um, wash your uh, plates or something like that. And then just draw, you know, um, use freshly drawn water. Absolutely. Mm, that's a good point. That's a good point. We, we, have, we have filtered water here at our house because um, I'm very, very particular about the quality of water that we just drink as normal water. Um, Brita was mentioned here as, as a preference though if I might there's a company called Pure P -U -R, and they make a chemical grade filter that's for home use and it uh, removes a lot of the, the other trace element chemicals that are found in water systems um, probably a little better than the Brita systems do sure. um, that's Pure what I used mostly in the United States when I was there uh, Pure makes the uh, the Swiss art the uh, the Red Cross filters, right? Yeah, filters. yeah, it's really good stuff. But you can find those there, and, and for just a little bit more money. But I highly recommend those. <laughs> okay, and now Janice, great to see Hi, you. Hi, everybody. Very nice to meet. Um, you. Nice to join everybody. I'm up here in Victoria, in British Columbia, Canada, still and nice. we drink a lot of tea. <laughs> like a window in the room. It is still light out. I'm actually out in the patio, so it's uh, it's been a lovely day. 
after a couple of not so lovely days. Um, I'm curious if um, anybody here uses tea in cocktails in any shape or form. So I make cocktail bitters, yeah. and I use actually. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> now it's I use tea. I use right. teas in some of my cocktails, and I also make traditional punches, um, cool. which were always had tea as a component. If she only knew just how much alcohol was consumed. All right, you do, you, you, you you just woke me up. <laughs> well, with the nice weather or the cocktails? <laughs> <laughs> the cocktails. Dennis Mansfield is quite, quite a well-known chef, and we're uh, honored to have you here. Oh, thank you. It's my pleasure. I don't use tea in cocktails, but as long as we're adulterating it, I am a big fan of Hong Kong-style coffee tea, which is roughly half black tea, half black coffee, um, milk, or if you're feeling particularly traditional, non-dairy creamer and simple syrup. Uh, and that does fall under the iced beverages, although it's not really quite an iced tea. All right. Now, you guys were talking about oxygenating the tea. Uh, this will probably be sacrilege, but what about carbonated tea? Is bubble tea very popular there in, in Japan? No. No, bubble tea is not popular in Japan. No. Um, they will give you, um, you can get um, drinks with tapioca in them, but those are usually juices. Um, you get milk or mango juice or coconut juice. Uh, they don't do tapioca in tea. No. But is, bubble, is bubble, bubble tea carbonated, tea. though? No. no it, it, bubble no. tea is made with um, little tapioca balls. So bubble tea right. is, or Taiwanese-style bubble tea, is um, tea, uh, black or green. Um, traditionally, once again, non-dairy creamer, although you can substitute milk. Simple syrup, um, a flavor powder or flavor syrup. America tends to use flavor syrups. Uh, Taiwan tends to use the flavor powders, um, red bean, taro, these sorts of things. Um, Tapioca. I think George was asking about carbonated, um, carbonated tea. Yeah. And yeah. Also, the question was bounced right? around on the cocktails, yeah. and we haven't even we haven't even touched that subject yet. I'm just <laughs> kind of waiting my turn. I I have so I have carbonated punches. Um, I'll get a list. Using using one of the ISI twist and sparkle units, um, okay. but it's most, it's usually the tea is mixed with a number of other ingredients. So I'll I'll most of the time when I'm creating punches, um, I use the, uh, the, some of the traditional ratios for sweet, sour, strong okay. and weak ingredients with tea usually being the weak. Um, uh -huh. And it takes a, it carbonates just fine. Yeah, I was just, I was just curious since you're, they're talking about the oxygen, oxygen levels of the tea and stuff, if you're infusing a, a gas into the mixture, whatever, if that's going to uh, substantially change the taste of the tea. Well, it, it, no well it does for a cocktail, actually, because because the bubbles kind of dampen. Um, damp Sorry, the bubbles dampen um, your taste receptors, so you okay. actually get a different tasting drink as the bubbles dissipate. Okay, that makes sense. Can you oxygenate water? Um, yeah, yeah, people do it for fish all the time. Mm. We have we have oxygenated water in <laughs> bottles here. We can buy it in the vending machines. Well, would that be better for tea? Don't know if it would be better for tea, but it's especially on on back to the hot day thing. The heat issues. Uh, people tend to get dehydrated, and you also lose a lot of the oxygenation in your blood. And uh, the athletes will drink the oxygenated water to kind of replenish the the supply in the bloodstream. Does that um, really work? I've been out biking because uh, I, I am an avid biker. I, I ride distances. I mean, I'll do when I go biking. I'm riding 40, 50 kilometers at a time. And turn your mic off. We need to mute this person quickly. Okay, bro. Okay, go ahead. And um, I will at times buy the the oxygenated water, and I'll feel my energy level increase within just a few minutes after that. 
because I'll, I'll start feeling, you know, especially on a really hot day, you start dragging, you know, you start feeling the drag around 30 kilometers, and I'll stop and I'll hit some of those and, and just you perk right up. Um, but about these cocktails, I'm, I'm really interested <laughs> in getting into the subject of the cocktails. Yeah, and, and they're um, coming too. Um, I can give you, well, we have the traditional old American recipe for the colds and for, for, you know, getting to sleep at night when you're having a problem. That's the hot toddy. Everybody knows about Grandma's yeah. recipe of the hot toddy. Black tea, lemon, honey, and uh, a shot of good whiskey. Mm -hmm. But um, one of my favorite uh, cocktail, if you will, recipes, but it's more of a tea, a cold tea, is you first brew you a cup of black currant, spicy black currant tea. Right, and then you put a shot of Captain Morgan spice rum in it. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. I'm warm already. What? Are you What's your favorite yeah. cocktail, Janice? Um, one of um, my favorites is um, just a like I said, I've been doing a lot of punches lately. I've been reading um, a, a couple of historical books about punches and the. The most basic recipe for a punch is one of sour, two of sweet, three of strong, four of weak. So you have a, a sour, like a, like a juice, um, usually the sweet component, the sugar, macerated with, with some citrus peel. And um, I, I like actually um, a good Canadian whiskey. I am in Canada, but uh, we're making some good ones here. Uh, with a, just a, a really good quality black tea, um, makes a delightful drink, and you, uh, chilled, works have, chilled. Have you tried Spice Box whiskey? Have I tried what? Spice Box whiskey. Um, I haven't. Be, I don't use a lot of flavored um, alcohols actually because I do my own infusions. No, but it's, it's just that there's a bit of spice in the whiskey itself, but it's not. Yeah, it's just I like to swap. I like to switch it up, so I'll actually make my own syrups and add my own spices. So one day I might be feeling like cardamom, <laughs> another I might be feeling like cinnamon. Oh wow! Um. <laughs> Jennifer? The other thing I have done that, that is really nice um, just for sort of a really basic um, cocktail base is you can actually infuse tea into, the, into spirits as well. So gin, uh, gin takes, spirit, takes tea, um, it infuses tea really nicely. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. You have George's full uh, attention now. <laughs> I have I've also infused um, wine with um, tea as well. So... Um, one yes. of the teas that is proving very popular here is um, jasmine butter tears, which is either a green, a scented green or a scented white tea. And I've um, I've sent I've placed some butter tears in the bottle of um, of a chardonnay and infused it over a couple of days, and it's just so oh, it's it's just it's a lovely balance of the jasmine um, and the Chardonnay. And Chardonnay sometimes can um, be a little bit sharp and, and tart, and the jasmine really overpowers that, so it's a lovely balance. And the other cocktail that I did, I, was, um, I actually did a class with a, a chef, or we, we, we created a, a, a class where we cooked with tea and did a three-course um, dinner. And so the first, um, what we were hoping to do was to present our, um, our diners with, um, with a sangria. And we made a sangria, I, I made a sangria with uh, Riesling and lots of fruit and uh, Darjeeling tea. And again, the balance between the, the Riesling, the fruits and the Darjeeling was just phenomenal. It was just amazing. Unfortunately, the class was cancelled. So I had the arduous task of having to finish the sangria all by myself. <laughs> Don't think I you shared, were disappointed, were you? I shared a glass with my husband, but just a glass. <laughs> oh, horror of it all. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm curious. We get a glimpse into May King's true personality. 
I'm, so, I'm curious, do, do people's tastes for tea change with the seasons? Do you find um, that you drink more black teas in the winter and green and white teas and herbal teas in the summer? Here in Japan especially so, very much so. That would seem like... We, we have, we have uh, teas called uh, mugicha, which means wheat. It's just roasted wheat. And instead of making beer with it, they'll boil it with water and, and make a tea out of it. And there's different levels of it, a very light, a, a light taste, or you can boil it really dark to where it takes on almost a coffee uh, flavor. And in some cases, we'll, they, they, they have several uh, vending machine items that will be like milk coffee, and it's actually made with the wheat tea rather than coffee. Um, and it, it really helps to um, energize you or, or give you a, a refreshment during, you know, really hot summer months. No caffeine. Uh, no caffeine in it, um, and it's got a nice clean finish to it, you know, and it, it doesn't bog you down. Um, in the wintertime, a lot of different green teas, the variety of green teas here from different locales, uh, different parts of Japan, each has a, a different character and, and the level of sweetness or the level of bitterness or the level of you know, different types of body and character to them. And it's a, a really interesting uh, exploration. And uh, the, the top sellers of iced tea, Lipton's number one. And uh, Lusian is number two. This is in the States. Um, Tetley Snapple. And honest tea. What is uh? Has anybody tried honest tea? Mm. Are they the the horse to bet on? Making. I haven't. No. Did Did uh, you say Snapple was uh, owned by Tetley? Sorry. What was that? Who Who was Snapple owned by? I'm not sure who owns Snapple. I'm just going over the the top. Iced tea makers, thing is that's the topic. Just uh, wondering what uh, people's thoughts of the, the different major brands and whether you think Honest Tea is the is the the, the big the big news in iced tea. I can tell you the yeah I can tell you the Lipton tea in America that that what you buy in the bottles is way too sweet. Um, here in Japan, the Lipton tea, the same bottle, same uh, label, it's, it's the Lipton lemon flavor tea is actually just black tea with lemon in it. There's no artificial sweeteners in it. It's really good. And I was shocked because in America, you know, you go grab a bottle of Lipton tea and they've got all the sweeteners and everything else in it. When I came to Japan and I took that first bottle of the Lipton tea over here and there was no, art it was just real clean water and black tea, you know. Although wow, America, it was so yeah, good. We have a problem with uh, with too much uh, sugar in our diets and way too much obesity is a problem, and, and you don't have that anywhere as much in in Japan. Eh, I'm adding some sugar to my diet right now. So what's that? Is that soylent purple? <laughs> that is soylent purple. <laughs> <laughs> oh really? What is that? Um, it's uh, mochi, so rice flour, sweet rice flour. And sugar, um, basically kneaded into a dough, uh, colored with I don't really want to know what, and cut into the shape of a star. What does it taste like? And 21, and 20 years ago, like somebody would ask you something different sugar. about it. <laughs> it looks soil and purple. Yep. Yeah. It's, it's sweet, but the flour makes it a milder sweet. It's like most... Uh, I, I like the way TC uh, described it. It's it's very much a Japanese uh, flavor of sweet, so it's a polite sweet. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't kick you in the face. Yeah, yeah. It it looks like a hit of acid. I was gonna say I was I was reserving myself. I was reserving myself. <laughs> I mean, it was rather thin. Didn't you see that? It was just sort of that paper paper texture. You know, it is paper thin. The <laughs> The mochi we get here are they're all in nice little balls. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, this is the stuff that forms the outer coating of the ball, basically. Oh, okay. Or was that on Monty Python? We'll see how you are in an hour, Carlos. 
<laughs> mm, probably not, because I actually do have some work that I have to do. Oh, come here, bird. Come here. Janet, my bird. have an, uh, another iced tea? Um, my bird wants to say hi to everybody. Oh, oh yes. DC, introduce your bird. This is Fuchan. Fuchan is, as you see, flying around me and bugging me, wanting attention, begging for attention. This bird was wild, actually. We caught him outside about eight months ago and has now become just part of the family. Oh, nice. So, now, will you sit on my shoulder and be quiet? No, I saved that. I say I did the screenshot there. <laughs> We normally have a, a screenshot of everybody uh, holding up a, a cup of tea or iced tea. Does, does everybody have cups uh, handy? No, I, I do have cups handy. It's empty. I've got my cup. Not handy. It's yeah. a cup of tea. Dana, sorry, this is a really cheesy kind of tradition I have. Okay, <laughs> I, I will go get a cup. And I take a screenshot. <laughs> okay, you go get a cup. There's I will be people. back in. We'll wait till we'll wait till George gets back. He's gonna yeah. go get his cup. All the. <laughs> Figure out whose shirt is louder, mine or mine or George's. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I have a cup. It's oh, full. and look, someone has come in with a maybe louder shirt than all both of us. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Hi. That that shirt is loud. Yeah. Well. That's fantastic for barbecue. That's me in a nutshell. Loud. You know what I mean? Where are you from? Oh, it's me, Tony. I, I'm from Arizona. Hey, I'm kind of from Arizona. Oh, uh, what part of Arizona <laughs> are you from, kind of? Well, I went to school at ASU, so Tempe. Stop right on. Me. Right on. Stop right on. nipping me. Stop nipping me already. Ah, uh, he's got a bird. You're nipping at me. I just recognize you, Tony. Ah. Uh. You're incognito. <laughs> I mean, so continuing the sweets, this might be uh, closer to the mochi daifuku that you're familiar with. This is um, the same sort of idea. It's red bean paste wrapped in uh, mochi based flour. Um, in this case, it's dyed and badly carved into the shape of a flower by me. Um, so oh, you <laughs> that. Right. It, it looks like a persimmon, kind of. Yeah. Right. yeah. That's sort of the idea. That's okay. Cups up. Tony, okay. if you don't have a cup, get up. <laughs> you gotta have a cup. Right. Screenshot. Cup you got a cup? Tony, where's your cup? You've got Tony, you have a cup? Andy? Well Tony, can you hear us? You have a cup, Andy? We're gonna take a screenshot of us. Oh yeah, I was just ordering some tea from the babe. She was <laughs> gracious enough to go get me some loose leaf green tea. We need a cup. You need a cup oh. for the screenshot. Yeah. Oh. You cup up. <laughs> I have a big old on. mason jar. There we go. <laughs> okay, there we go. Yeah. Everybody get the cups up. I nearly, I nearly pressed end broadcast. There we go. After a moment. Okay. Yeah, the mason jar wasn't that bad. <laughs> Cheese. <laughs> Got it. Very good. Um. Yes, yeah. you are the star of the screenshot. Oh. Uh, it's a Hello Kitty cup. Ah, <laughs> 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 so are we just green tea. Are we discussing types of tea that we like to drink today, or is that what are we doing? Or? We've been discussing mostly iced tea because that was the topic. Ah, uh, okay. And, uh, alcohol in tea, or tea and alcohol. Yeah, uh -huh. and Janice came in, and, and she's a chef, so so we start we we veered off onto. Um, Booze and tea recipes, <laughs> and that's that's pretty much where we are right now. Okay. And then there's music coming up. Ah. Yeah. So many uses for tea. I didn't know. <laughs> I was just have a cup I of tea. I think yeah. cooking for tea would be a great topic to talk about if um, Janice would like to share her insights in oh, that in a future hangout. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that would be really um, that would be really interesting. Definitely, I'd really like that. Get Larry in. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll stack the panel with chefs and talk about food that you that you make. Mm. <laughs> we have some we have some great tea That's cookies in Japan. Right. Um, do you guys ever talk about like the different types of 
tea ceremonies out there? Chinese, Japanese, Korean tea ceremonies? Is that a, yeah, yeah. a topic? Yeah, and you're you're half Korean or full? Half Korean. Uh, have you, have you had any cer tea ceremonies? You witnessed. I, them? You know, the funny thing is, is that there was a Korean tea ceremony expert, master, graduate, whatever, uh, who actually opened a store um, near. Um, in Tempe, near uh, Baseline and Dobson, um, which he would know of, uh, the guy to the left of yep. me on the screen down there. Uh, it's no longer there, but it was fascinating. I walked into the room, and it was very palpably Buddhist. Like, you could just feel the energy in the room and, and you know, the way she served tea, brew tea, um, and then afterwards, they, she gave you these little snacks that come along with the tea. It's kind of that's not actually part of their ceremony, but since she's opening a store for people to come in and drink tea, and then she has Wi-Fi, she felt obligated to offer snacks. So that was pretty cool. Um, I would love to see somebody who is an expert in tea ceremony do a, like an on-air tea ceremony thing. That would be cool. Yeah, like, Carlos like, did, a, did a mini one. Carlos did a mini presentation. Yeah, I did a quickie. And oh. the, well, that was the first hangout, wasn't it? Yeah, I did um, sort of a yeah. very, very simplified, quick um, Japanese matcha. It was not really a tea ceremony, although it involved um, some of the tools. Ah. Well, that would be um, cool. Yeah. yeah. As for um, an actual tea ceremony, I don't think I have... I don't think my teacher has any demonstrations scheduled in the near future, but... Uh -huh. um, I can ask around and see what happens, possibly put something on video. Oh, you I'm have a particularly masochistic, I'll do like one of I'll, I'll do one <laughs> of my practice sessions and you can see me fumble and screw things up. Um, can you bring a laptop in there? Or a, or a smartphone to, to do the hangout from there? Um, I don't know if I can do a hangout from there, but I could certainly post a video record and post a video or something. Um, and so, do uh, hangout question and answers afterwards. So, silly question, are you studying tea ceremony? Yes. Um, I have about one year under my belt, which means I am a very, very raw beginner and completely terrible at everything. But I can make a cup of tea. If you get belts? That helps, no, man. I mean, I you're getting... Get, if you can make a cup of tea, you're earning your tuition money back, so that's great. Yeah. <laughs> no colored belts involved? No, there are no belts involved. There are certificates, but... No belts. And, and I do a Chinese tea ceremony, um, but I I actually call it um, Gong Fu Chinese tea ceremony with a dash of milk, as a tribute to my British upbringing. <laughs> but it's my own take on the Chinese Gong Fu ceremony, because oh. most most Chinese tea ceremony is done in silence, and I realised very quickly that. Uh, a, a lot of the participants, in, in fact when I moved to Brisbane I had a lot of people who complained to me and said that they went to a Chinese um, tea ceremony and got absolutely ripped off because they got charged a fortune for a thimble of tea <laughs> and they didn't realize the, um, what they were, I realized that there was a clash, a clash of cultures. In the British culture we make a cup of tea, but the ritual of make it, making a cup of tea has no purpose. What we want is that brew at the end, but the Chinese tea ceremony, the whole tea ceremony is what you are privy to and um, what you are supposed to be enjoying. So I, I realize that a lot of people who went to, uh, to China to see a tea ceremony, it was almost like watching a foreign film without subtitles. So that's why I moderated my Chinese tea ceremony to explain each and every step and explain why I'm doing particular bits and pieces. And I've got, um, I think I've got a 30 second video that was captured of me doing a, a Chinese tea ceremony. Um, but I could yeah. maybe try and do one in the future in a hangout. I'll, I'll have to figure out the technicalities of it. Is that on your yeah. YouTube channel? Making? Uh, yes, I think it is, yeah. But it's, it's only 30 seconds. Yeah, you don't want a full Japanese I'll tea show ceremony. You the, yeah. I'll share the link. Yeah. The Japanese tea ceremony um, has so many different little tiny details in it 
each sound, like the sound of the whisk in the, in the water, has a meaning. The each motion, each turn of the bowl, turning the bowl three times before passing it, there's a meaning to it. Every the the bowing before each por portion of the ceremony, um, there's there's certain meanings, and it's a very ritualized process for the Japanese tea ceremony. Um, and it's it's very Shinto in origin. Which is yeah. longer, the Chinese or the Japanese? Well, a full Japanese tea ceremony, including meal and both bowls of tea and the time in the garden, all that is about four hours. Yep. <laughs> your legs, your knees are sore. <laughs> I just watched a, a five-minute video on uh, Chinese traditional tea making, and it was all silent. And I don't know if it's my North American attention span, or, but I mean, I just, I was like, oh, I would... You know what I mean with the washing of the cups? I just I like a single um, a single bowl of Japanese tea, which is kind of what you usually see in the demonstrations, is about half an hour. Um, you posted one of those actually. I know I did. So and there's luckily some really nice music to keep me awake while I watch. Yeah. Well, you know, just a little bit of wonderful like Guchin music. You know, the the seven string zither and. You know, some Chinese tea ceremony. That's a great way to get yourself into some Zen hyper focus. You know, um, but May May King, I have a question. How do you pronounce that very badly Romanized Chinese word I typed in the chat? Uh, pu a. Uh. Okay. Well, I, I won't be able to duplicate that, but <laughs> at least now I know. Um, that's great tea. I love that tea. It's one of my favorite teas. In Korean, it's pronounced bowl e, but it's um, it's the same tea, and it's it's great tea. One of my favorite teas. Yeah, and in Cantonese, it's pronounced bole. Oh, bole. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, are, do you speak Cantonese or Mandarin or both? Or do you? No, no. Do you? I I don't. I, oh, I, I see. I I speak Cantonese. I don't speak Mandarin, unfortunately. Uh, okay. I had three years of Mandarin in college twenty years ago. Which means I remember nothing, <laughs> nothing at all. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so now, Pure uh, is a great tea. Mm -hmm. One of my favorites. Oh, oh I, I have to ask the usual question to the people who are new here, and that, um, Jennifer, are you a dunker or not? A dunker. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I like to ask all the guests whether they know dunker. <laughs> no, no dunker. No. No dunking. Okay. How about you, Janet? Dunker? I am not a dunker. <laughs> I do not. I do not like foreign objects in my tea. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I wrap some of this in a cocktail. And how about you, Tony? <laughs> um, you have to explain. I'm not familiar. What is a dunker? A dun when you dunk a biscuit into tea. Oh, you have biscuits with you? No, 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 no. Tea cookies <laughs> or like Maria tea biscuits, things like when they say the well, hard biscuits. Well, it, the I only time I would consider I that, the only time I would consider that is if there's if I was doing it this sort of British way with milk in your tea. Yeah. You know, and and then I would consider because it's really more like coffee at that point, um, and I'm drinking it for that reason. But if I'm drinking tea normally, it's because I'm in kind of Asian mode. And yeah, no, no. Not, Yesterday I had chocolate chip cookies and I dunked them in my coffee. I dunk, I dunk, <coughs> I dunk. Thank you very well, much. It, in, co in, in coffee, that's okay. I think that's that's acceptable. I wouldn't need well, see, I don't dunk in coffee either. Oh, you prude. No. <laughs> so, uh, Paul, um, you've got uh, your guitar handy in uh, yeah. arms length. I, I and about the dunking thing, oh, I oh. I do do it, but it depends. Like it's, <laughs> some people do, and I, I kind of like dunking a biscuit in milky tea, but I would mm -hmm. yeah, it depends who you're with. Some people frown on it. I had a friend's. Do you do this in He's a social frown. dunker. He's yep. a social <laughs> dunker. <laughs> no, <but it's> just, <laughs> My friend's oh, mum told me when I was a, uh, we were, uh, she just told me, we don't dunk here. I was so I said, okay. I get it. Uh, <laughs> but I love it. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Yeah. Makes me wonder how they got the name Dunkirk in, in oh, never mind. Um, <laughs> yeah. Paul, you know the yeah, Kit Kat Slam? 
Yes. Yeah, the Tim Tam where you suck up the tea. Yeah. I have yeah. done it. Yeah. It's, yep. Okay. It's yeah, it's great. Good. Yeah. It, wow, you I guys mean, are gonna have to explain. I don't know what that means. It's a chocolate biscuit. <laughs> you, you yeah, we've got Tim Tam here. That's the the tea right through the biscuit. Mm -hmm. And then oh. it's it looks like a small cannoli. It's just okay. You nibble <laughs> off one corner, uh -huh. and you nibble off the opposite corner, and then you can suck your your hot beverage through the Tim Tam. Oh. <laughs> That's got to be a That's British thing. That's why you've got to have them here, do we? Janice, do we have Tim Tams here in Canada? We do have Tim Tams here. Oh, well. Obviously. Yeah. We get all manner of, uh, we get a lot of treats that they get in the UK here as well. You won't find them in Quebec. <laughs> See, when, when you guys said dunking, I thought you meant, do you guys use tea bags or not? And I'm like, well, you know. <laughs> tea bags are a bit of a dirty word around here, but I use them. Well, it depends. Like, you know, they, I, they have these nice uh, uh, reusable muslin tea bags that you can buy at Whole Foods. So you can take your loose leaf teas and throw them into a pot. Mm -hmm. You can do that. Um, or if you like really strong tea, you could throw it into a cup, um, which I like strong tea. Um, but yeah, the Lipton, yeah, no, <laughs> no <I'm> wrong. <laughs> Do you know about honest tea? Anybody? Uh, from what I know of honest tea, it seems like a, a company that's uh, well run and has a good future. Anybody else? I've heard, I, I've had some of their tea, I think, uh, but. At, if they have it at Whole Foods, I've probably had it, but... Uh, but they make a tea that, that is completely unsweetened, uh, an iced tea in a jar. And, uh, and everything's organic and fair trade. And their packaging is so great. are they just selling... I haven't seen it here in Canada. I don't know. Um, but are they selling it as pre-made tea? You, you said that they're, they're sort of a runner-up to some of the big ones, but do they sell loose tea as well? Oh, no, I don't think so. Honest tea, I don't think. I think they just do the jars like a Snapple. Oh, okay. All right, so, uh, Paul, thanks yes. for answering the dunking question. And, oh, that's all right. Uh, and now we can get to our music segment. Am I hearing a kettle? Oh, what the hell was that? Oh, that's my, that's my kettle brewing, so... <laughs> Very, that's appropriate. All right, so, uh, and so how, how much time we got there? Oh, whenever you finish, I don't have to take okay. any time for break at all here. It's amazing. <laughs> how much time? Yeah. Well, this is an original song. It's um, as soon as you're talking about ceremonies and things, it's it's kind of um, it's about um, staying in the moment, basically. So it's an original track of this. Picking up pieces from yesterday. Man, I don't see much at all today. Try to find a reason, there's no reason that I know. Try to make sense of it though. Just to be here. And now, just to be in the moment, looking all around me, as I'm standing on this ground. Who really knows what's been before? Scientific explanations, they whirl my head around. Sometimes I feel like a lone star flying. Just to be here now. Just to be in the moment. Cause tomorrow never knows. You 
think it would be easy to be. I think it would be easy just to be. In the moment. Thank you, Paul. Very nice indeed. That's a more yeah, Paul. slower version, but that, that's a, yeah. Thank you. And uh, I just uh, would like to give uh, Janice an opportunity to let people know where they can find you on the internet. Oh, okay. Um, well, they can find me on Google Plus, um, which is probably where I'm spending most of my time online these days. Um, but I'm also uh, have a website, realfoodmadeeasy.ca, and um, I have blog about my co a blog about cocktails over at uh, housemade.ca. Great, great. And uh, Paul, do you have a a website you'd like to plug? Just the uh, on the Google Plus, just the email. Um, at the moment, I'm just compiling a, a whole lot of um, original tracks and um, frequenting the Hangouts and um, getting uh, a lot of, uh, having a great time and um, being very inspired. So, yeah, if anyone wants to, to drop me a line there, that'd be cool. Yeah, the, the more and more collaboration in these Hangouts is, is fantastic. And, it's uh, brilliant. I love it. That's what brought oh, me to... to I'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> Get, you're getting a harmonica, I hope. <laughs> yeah, Google Plus is great for for inspiring you to, to like if you're into photography, you, you suddenly your stream is filled with such fantastic stuff. You you, you want to go out and take your camera and go out and shoot, and it's probably like that for for a lot of different uh, fields like like music. You're getting inspired. And it, and oh, it's incredible, yeah. And people passing links on and checking this person out that they've known in, in another part of the world and you're meeting people that you wouldn't necessarily meet. So it, this is what basically the Hangout thing really uh, inspires me. Yeah. There's so much more They're engagement on G Plus than, than traditional. And, and these Hangouts are fantastic. Oh, the, hang the Hangouts are fabulous. I mean, I've learned so much. I never thought it would be possible to learn as much as I've learned just very naturally, casually. People are so giving in Hangouts of, of their, their, their knowledge about just about any subject. Technology, web design, tea, you know, music, audio, anything te technology related, photography. If you, if you ask somebody, they'll give you a two-hour dissertation just because they want to help you. And the, that's the coolest thing. Right? There's a real tight community feel about G+. Hmm. How, do, how do you think uh, social media in general, uh, particularly G+, is, uh, its role in uh, promoting tea consumption? Hmm. Anybody? Well, just from doing the illustrations that I do for uh, what my coffee says to me and what my tea says to me, and I put that out into all forms of social media, um, I'm only just now since January of this year starting to get a little bit of momentum off of Google Plus. But biggest momentum has been Twitter and and apps and Facebook, mostly because it has it had more traction before Google did. But yeah. That's the other one that I do. Can't remember. It's the same for me as well. Actually, um, I use Twitter for my business, but coming over to Brisbane, a lot of people are on Facebook, so I'm still using Twitter for my business primarily, although I've started to use Facebook a bit more. Um, G+, I'm very, very new to it, and I, but I just love the connection and I love um, um, learning from other people and sharing my <laughs> insights. and. There's definitely a lot of scope for developing much closer relationships with people on G+. I, I love it for that reason, and I, I just love these Hangouts. Yeah, that, that third dimension really adds a lot to the, the text-based relationships you mostly have on, on the others. I look, at, I look at the Hangouts like I'm having several people over in my living room, 
Mm-hmm. Um, exactly. Just being here in Japan, um, when I go outside, I'm mostly speaking Japanese, and here I get to have you know a full house of English speakers. So it's it's like having everybody over for a, a meal or a barbecue or something. So everybody's actually you know like in my living room, yeah. um, and it's that's a very cool experience. Okay. One second. Some strange noises. Okay. Yeah, so, uh, I I use um. I use multiple, like I use different platforms, um, social media wise, but for, we have a couple of specialty tea sellers, um, purveyors here in town, and um, I think most of them are probably more active on Twitter and Facebook and get more traction for from the local business. Um, I think Daniela, who... Um, owns a company called Silk Road Tea in town here. They do some mail order sales or some internet based sales, but um, the bulk of their business is about connecting with people um, in town at their location. Um, and uh, it's a combination of retail sales and people coming in for a tea experience. So Daniela is actually um, has has gone through and trained um, to do the tea ceremony, and um, so she shares that with people as well. But um, that's kind of in the background. Um, that that part of sort of what she, what she is, who she who she is, and her expertise doesn't come through a lot on social media. Like Google Plus is uh, just a year old, and uh, so they they still have some some catching up to do, and I think they will. Oh. Definitely, but I also think Google Plus has has a unique advantage in that in in 3D or 4D you can actually create a sense of culture. You could almost create like a virtual just just through the concept of hangouts and people drinking tea, um, and maybe even having a backing page, you know, on G Plus. Um, you create this sort of like tea shop kind of you can create a tea shop kind of experience a virtual tea shop. Where people consume tea together, enjoy tea together, talk about tea together. Whereas you really, it's tough to do that on Facebook. It's tough to do that on Twitter. There's only so much you can say in 140 characters, right? Mm-hmm. So um, I think G Plus offers you texture uh, that you can't get anywhere else, which I like. So. Well, well, for me on Twitter, what I like the best about it is the fact that I can write the little short things, but I can attach my illustration, and then it has gets a different type of legs. Whereas on, on Google you have more Google Plus you have more interactivity overall. And you also have a, a picture that's that's sort of large, you know, it's in people's stream and it's it's got a decent size to it compared <laughs> to uh, the other two. And, yeah. and and people who are in the arts are definitely benefiting from the larger um, image size that they can work with in people's screens. Makes the photographs look great. And I'm always conscious in my posting on T for 10 to try and use that space that's given to us because it's a very international crowd on T for 10. People, mm-hmm. you know, very few English speakers, and so I, I try and make things very visual and use that that space that's given to us. For the most part, most of the population is visual, and if you attach a visual, it's likely going to catch someone's eye, anyways. And that's just like I'm a designer, so for 20 years. I know visuals do help. <laughs> Pictures are the new headlines. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> you know, it would be fun if you could create, Lawrence, a, a type of like badging system. So if you could list like the top 100 like must-have teas or whatever, and so as you as you accumulate tea, you sort of get like a virtual like badge or something in a very cute sort of way. Um, and that would be kind of cool because then people have a, have a reason to to go out and buy more tea. Hopefully, from you know sustainable, organic, you know fair trade, uh, ideally, right? Um, but it just gives them more experience, and they get this the, they get the fun of accumulation, which is I think a great thing. Because once they buy 10, 20 different kinds of teas, they're hopelessly sucked in. Yeah, and they're, they're never going to get out. We're going to have to talk about that later, for sure, Tony. That's that's quite a scheme you got there. All right, so so <laughs> the blues the blues men are uh, prepared. Tea, have you got your 
Well, I, I was I was thinking that you know Paul has already done one original. Um, maybe I should do one before we go to the blues. Sure, sure, sure. What do you think, guys? You, the rest of the room. You play guitar and you put the bird in your mouth and squish. Two thumbs bird. and a toe. <laughs> no, I am not putting the bird in my mouth. Okay. I was picturing but, some sort of strange instrument there. Okay, go ahead, DC. This is a new piece that I'm working on. Um, I've got a gig coming up in uh, next month, the 17th here in Japan, in a little small place that uh, if anybody decides that they're going to come visit Japan in my neck of the woods, you know, hit me up, hit me up, all right? So anyway, um, this one is uh, Turning Roads. You always come to Forks in the Road, you always come to different places where you, you've got multiple decisions to make. In Japan especially, this is really noted, where you can be walking through a neighborhood and you'll come across a, a intersection that will have five or six different directions to go instead of four, like in the U.S., where you just basically have grid crossings. You'll have roads that will go in anywhere from five, six, even seven different directions. And so you have like almost a star pattern uh, at some of these roads. And sometimes knowing which way to go um, can be an interesting, you know, choice to make and, and your day can change because of it. Um, I tend to I tend to purposely get lost here in Japan at times. I'll just, just go because I know there's always going to be a train station somewhere that I can find my way home. <laughs> so anyway, turning roads. That's a really ambitious tune with all those uh, harmonics that you have to get. That's a great tune. Thanks. Thank you very much, TC. It's an awesome tune. Then you should record that. TC, uh, it will be. It's going to be on my CD. It's going to awesome. be on my CD. It's coming, eh? Yeah, it's coming. Something on the uh, on Amazon, on Google Music. You can have an album. Um, not yet, uh, because I'm still working on the copyright issues and getting the ISRC codes and paperwork and everything else. And I've got to get things documented properly before I, I release my material. Um, uh, that's just one of those things. You know, you got to get all the, the I's dotted and the T's crossed and your P's curled just right. And 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Otherwise, you end up like Def Leppard re-releasing all their stuff. <laughs> again and again, again and again. Yeah. Paul, what do you think? Yeah, cool. You want us to take it out with a bit of blues? We're going to play the Got No Tea Blues. Okay, that's fine. Got no tea. You got that? So, everybody, thank you for coming. And uh, we'll uh, see you next week. Same uh, time, same tea time, same tea channel. And uh, let's uh, take it away with some blue, gentlemen. Thank you. The drop detuning. Thank you.